And there we go. I'm going to get a cup of water and I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, Dave, can you get a screenshot somewhere along the way? Yeah. Um, I, if I if I try to do that, I'm going to be like right here. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. I may have. Oh, boy. That's not, um, that's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Well, I can try to do it with, I can certainly do it with my phone camera, but it may kind of look kind of crappy. Uh, I'll try to do, I don't know if I can, if this is producing it with control, with uh, shift command four captures a screenshot on a Mac, but I can't see whether that's working because it's a full screen video. Gotcha. Right? But yeah, I'll, sorry. Do it, I'll do it one way or the other here, yeah. I didn't, I don't think I told you that I'm following in your footsteps, sort of with a, a project about Abraham Lincoln. Did I tell you this? Is that right? What, what are you going to do? You know, you know, the images of America books. Yes. But, so I, I didn't want to do many more of these, but I, I ended up doing a, one about the Lincoln Memorial. Wow, that's fantastic. And it's, I'm working with a guy that did one on Forge Theater. Huh? And what, what, is, what, what is his name, Kevin? Brian Anderson. He's a he's not a Civil War historian per se, but he's on the board of Forge Theater. Nope. And he's, so years ago, they they wanted to put together something as a fundraiser. Yeah. And and so I I had this idea of doing a Lincoln Memorial because the centennial of this opening is in 2022. That's right. Yeah. And, I, and so. Um, the, the Arcadia people love the idea because it's the most visited monument. Um, but, um, you know, we want to have somebody who had ties to the East Coast who's on sure. And so I, I looked at other books that were done and, you know, Forge Theater, he's, yeah. you, know, you know, he's done a lot of the leg work and has a lot of contact for pictures. So, so I've been going through all these Library of Congress pictures and it's really fascinating. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love that stuff. And, you know, the dedication of the memorial, Robert Todd Lincoln was there, you know, near yeah. the end of his life, you know, yeah. Yeah, there, we've got some pictures of him that'll be in there. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow, oh, I love that book when it comes out. But one of the, one of the um, publications, there is, there is a kind of the official government book done in 1927 or so, Yes. And they, they gave it to different um, representatives and congressmen. I ordered one online and it, this one was a, it belonged to a representative from I think Kentucky. There, huh. There's a note inside signed by um, um, U.S. Grant III, who was involved with his, you know, his grandfather's the president. He was involved with uh, Parks Administration of some sort, and sure. so, came, so I ordered this book. Yes, and, and this is with it. So it used to be this, um, you know, a congressman. So it's, it's pretty neat how you kind of get on these pathways. That's amazing, and I know that book. I never had that in my Civil War collection that I gave away to the Grant Library, but but I had seen it a number of times, and it, it was a it was a government printing office work, yeah. and, and but I did have a and maybe I still have it. I have some autograph note or had if unless I got rid of it um, from U.S. Grant the Third, who was also an officer of of some type. I forget now his yeah. military record, but. He was That's an cool. interesting guy too. Um, yeah. Hmm. What's the neat? Amazing. The neat well, I'll be fascinated. Yeah, oh, it's great. And I'll be fascinated to see as your book publication approaches. We're looking at, it'll be done. Um, gosh, I mean, the, the centennials in May. Yes. Yeah. Hoping to be over there for that and and we do a couple of programs around that, um, but it'll be it'll be coming out in the spring. That's fantastic! Wow, congrats on that. Thanks. I, it's a fun. I don't want to keep doing those books because they're, you know, it's it's more of doing a scrapbook than writing a book. 
Yeah, and a lot of the images and information in that series, they would be fantastically hard to find unless they were pulled together in books like that, you know? Right. So they're very useful uh, his, in yeah. terms of historiography. Yeah. Guess I'll shut up. We're going to start. <laughs> Presumably, we'll get a. They've stop been hearing back. you the entire time, by the way. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. We're going to have next week. We're going to have. Mysterious zone. I'll tell you later. It's a region of ice worlds, some solitary, some with moons. Their names may be unfamiliar. Eris, Make Make, Talumea, but they hold clues to all our origins. And the first of these worlds, and the one we'll reach in 2015, is the king of the Kuiper Belt, Pluto. The long journey of NASA's New Horizons mission began in 2006 aboard America's biggest and baddest rocket, tricked out with every conceivable booster. We built a very light spacecraft and bought a very large launch vehicle, and the combination is ferocious. But in some sense, it all began in 1930 with Clyde Pombaugh, 24 years old and fresh off a farm in Kansas, but willing to spend long hours scanning star fields to find a moving point of light. Humanity's first glimpse of Pluto. The dream of actually getting to Pluto began with a six-year-old boy in love with science who grew up to lead a team of brilliant researchers and engineers with dogged persistence through decades of planning and building and testing. A race against time just to get to the launch pad. Exploring the outer solar system, because it's so far, takes a lot of time. It requires a lot of patience, a lot of dedication, a lot of perseverance, but it's the frontier. Assuming all goes well at Pluto, NASA may choose to extend the adventure further out into the Kuiper Belt, the solar system's mysterious third zone. This is maybe the one chance in my lifetime that we're going to get a spacecraft out there and look up close at one of these Kuiper Belt objects. December 6th, 2014. New Horizons is speeding towards Pluto at a phenomenal rate, and we can't wait for it to get there. January 27, 2015, six months as approach science begins. July 14, 2015, New Horizons long journey, three billion miles, nine years in flight, and 85 years of speculation about Pluto climaxes <coughs> in one day of close approach and flyby. You know, we're rounding third base and we're headed home. The dream, the adventure, the promise of discovery. That's what makes 2015 the year of Pluto. Well, hello, everybody. This is Scott Roberts with Explore Scientific and the Explore Alliance. And it is my pleasure to be here with David J. Eicher from Astronomy Magazine and Kevin Schindler from Lowell Observatory. And uh, Kevin's live with us now at the Pluto Discovery Telescope Dome. And that's really, uh, it's really cool. So it's the first time for me to see it. Um, Kevin and David are great friends. They've known each other for a long time. And I'm going to let David introduce uh, Kevin and uh, uh, tell our audience all about him. Well, thank you, Scott. Kevin, if you want to know something about Lowell Observatory and its history, he's the guy. Kevin is the historian at Lowell Observatory. He's been there for a long while. So whether you're talking about uh, Percival Lowell going westward and having the advent spirit of adventure and the desire to learn about other worlds and the obsession with Mars and creating an observatory that was the first of its kind and still a unique place in the world, or uh, the story of what's happened at Lowell Observatory with uh, 
some of Lowell's collaborators, uh, the Slifers, VM Slifer particularly, and, and also uh, his brother. Uh, and then the young uh, uh, farmhand who uh, was born in Streeter, Illinois, and uh, uh, moved uh, as a young man to Kansas, uh, to a small town northeast of Dodge City, and uh, got interested in astronomy with a book at, when he was high school aged about Mars and started sketching the planets and then bombarded the staff at Lowell Observatory at the end of the 1920s with his drawings. And that led to him wandering out to Arizona and taking a job. And we know what happened with that telescope uh, subsequently that Kevin is standing next to. So Kevin is a dear friend of mine. We're, we're uh, working uh, when things normalize, we hope on a project, book project together in the future here. Uh, he's a great writer, a great knowledgeable historian, and the go-to guy when it comes to the history of Lowell Observatory. So I'm proud to introduce my pal, Kevin Schindler. Thanks, Dave. And I'll, I'll have to say, you know, you're such a gifted writer and have documented the cosmos and the Civil War and so many other things, but I didn't realize you were getting into fiction now. <laughs> I appreciate it. Introduction. <laughs> yep. uh, I'm going to have to remember that one. <laughs> but, Kevin, Kevin is also a, he's a very talented and modest guy, Kevin. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it, it is, you know, it's exciting for me to join you guys, and especially where I'm standing. I mean, you know, as you were talking about Clyde Tombaugh came out here on the train from Kansas in 1929, a train is going by. And oh. the tracks her as the crow flies maybe half a mile from where I'm standing. Wow. But it felt like I was back, you That's know, and, you know, Clyde, when he left home in Kansas, you know, he got on the train and his father gave him fatherly advice. Clyde, make yourself useful and beware of easy women. And then he <laughs> got on the train, made his way out here and he was successful on at least one of those fronts because you know, I'm standing right where he made history. Yeah. And, you know, with discovering the ninth planet. And, you know, to be able to stand right next to the telescope, right where he was. And, you know, my office is, is right above where his office was. And, and in fact, my office might have been when he, where he was living at the time. He was living in apartments. I mean, it's, you know, you really get a feel of the history and the heritage and, you know, how important it is to share that excitement of discovery. It happens. 80 plus years ago, but it's still is so exciting for us today. And it, you know, it touches on that part of us, I think, that makes us human, that desire to explore and yes. to see what's out there. Um, you get goose pimples. I've been here 20 some years and I still come up here and take pictures every time I come because <laughs> my gosh, I, I'm standing where this important history was made. Oh yeah. And, you know, so it's really pretty special to be able to, to be part of it. And the scope looks beautiful. It does. It is. Uh, um, I know that we're seeing the back end of the scope. It looks like there's a guide scope with the uh, um, perhaps the guiding eyepiece. Is that right? Did you? I, it had to be guided by hand. Um, yeah. And the uh, the plate holder is that? How big is that plate holder? It's 14 by 17 inches. Wow. <laughs> so we're talking. We're talking about some nice sized plates. And you you think each one. Of Plates covered by 15 degrees in the sky. Clyde had a, you know, I mean, really, he made the discovery within a year and probably would have made it earlier, except that part of the sky had already set. Yeah. Um, so he wait till the next season. But then he spent another 14 years photographing more than 75% of the sky, you know, standing in here, just like I am right now. I have a winter coat on for a reason. Sure. At three feet of snow last week, and it's, it's um, chilly, maybe not as cold as up in Wisconsin, or, but <laughs> it's pretty cold here. Um, but, you know, to be able to, to retrace what he did, and, you know, it's all right here still. You know, the discovery plate we have, the, this instrument, the blink comparator, we've got all that stuff on site here. So I was not sure where to stand for this because, oh, I could stand by the blink comparator. No, I could stand by the, in the plate vault. No, the telescope. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, 
You know, we're, we're, I, I have you guys on. Uh, we are uh, going to all convene on Thursday, this Thursday, on February 4th. It will be the 115th birthday of Clyde Tomba. And um, so we have an amazing lineup of people. Um, uh, and and uh, David's been uh, uh, creating the schedule. How does it kick off? On Thursday, it, it kicks off with a magnificent introduction by Scott Roberts, oh. our, our our fearless leader <laughs> through these enterprises, uh, and and then we have a great friend uh, of ours as well, David Levy, who is yes. a wonderful guy, and of course, most everyone who's really into the astronomy hobby knows David for his comet discoveries, for his involvement in the. Uh, discovery and analysis of Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9, of course, impacting Jupiter in 1994. But he was also many other things. And one of those things was Clyde Tombaugh's biographer. He knew Clyde very, very well, as well as anybody uh, of his generation did. And he wrote the biography of Clyde Tombaugh. So David's going to share his uh, uh, remembrances, his thoughts about Clyde and Pluto with us. Uh, Kevin will be giving, as we've seen now, a, a, a glimpse of a magnificent uh, presentation live from the Pluto telescope. I, I always, you know, I was drilled to call it the Pluto camera. I can't get that out of my head. But right. the Pluto Discovery Instrument Dome, which is incredible. We will have Alan Stern, the PI of the New Horizons mission, who was inspired as a young kid to get interested in, in Pluto and in planetary science. And he's going to do a Q&A about the New Horizons mission of yeah. course, that, that flew past Pluto, as you know, in 2015 and, and told us everything we know essentially about this incredible system of uh, that's somewhat analogous in, in a way to uh, Earth and Moon. We know there was a big impact that created uh, the system of moons at Pluto now, so that's going to be an incredible highlight. And then we have the staff of Astronomy Magazine. So Astronomy Magazine is the largest publication on the subject in the world, and it has been for many, many years. Uh, and when I was a little kid, almost uh, farther back than anyone can remember, back uh, in 1982, I came and joined Astronomy Magazine. And for a long time, it's been, you know, kind of me and some older folk. Well, we had some retirements recently. And so this is a little bit of an introduction to talk about Pluto and some other science and hobby subjects of this new younger staff that we have now cool. in Astronomy Magazine. So I'm looking forward to that. So we'll have uh, one old hand, we'll have Michael Bakich in with us as well, yeah. but we'll have Allison Klesman, we'll have Jake Parks, we will have young Abby Bolenbach, who does our online videos now for the magazine. Mm -hmm. We will have Caitlin Bongiorno, and we will have Mark Zastro. The entire editorial staff of Astronomy Magazine will be making presentations wow. along with myself. So Love we're, that. we're looking forward to this. It's going to be a great night. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So I can, you know, I can I almost pinch myself right now. Uh, you know, I was I was really anticipating uh, doing the, it. We're doing a test right now with Kevin to see how the lighting is in the dome and how the audio is and everything. We were, really weren't quite too sure if we could pull it off, but uh, uh, Kevin's got a, a strong internet connection inside of there, and uh, I, I'm just. Uh, I, I'm beside myself. I feel like I'm actually there in the dome with you, you know, I'm that, I'm that excited. So, um, you know, and, and it's something, this is a telescope I wanted to see for a very long time. I've seen photographs of it and stuff, but to see you live there talking about it, moving it around, you know, it's a, it's the real thing. It's not this two dimensional <laughs> photo, you know, that I, I can only stare at. Um, I love the photos, the historical photos of Clyde, uh, you know, posing with the instrument and everything. I can only imagine what it was like for him to have made this discovery. And, uh, you know, the whole world kind of embraced this, you know, uh, a discovery of, uh, of this uh, planet that they had been searching for all this time. And, and then the subsequent controversy that we've had with um, 
uh, people trying to decide whether it's a planet, a dwarf planet, uh, a Kuiper belt object, you know, what is it exactly? What it is, it's an amazing world, and it has geology, and it's got a moon, and it's got all this amazing stuff, and that's what New Horizons showed us. So I can't imagine a better, I mean, you know, if you could have a collection of books to read all about this, maybe squeeze all that stuff together with iconic people, okay, to make this presentation on Thursday. Uh, it, it's it's going to be, you know, I'm just... I, I'm happy to be the fly on the wall uh, to watch this thing go down. So uh, I hope that all of you guys um, uh, tune in. It'll be Thursday, uh, February 4th, the 115th birthday of Clyde Tomba uh, with uh, uh, close friends of his uh, on there, including David Iker knew Clyde. I got to meet him once, okay? Um, and, uh, and Kevin will... Uh, illustrate the history of the instrument that he used to make this amazing discovery with. Uh, Alan Stern will show us the ongoing research and answer questions that you may have in the audience, okay? Uh, so you guys uh, watching chat right now, you want to read up and, and study up and, and get your questions ready. Um, after, after we have all the talks and everything, we're going to have our after party. And I will announce the login uh, so you can go into our Zoom waiting room there you'll get an audio check and a video check and then you can come on to the show after all this is done and uh, show images through your telescope, talk about astronomy, uh, you know, and join us in celebrating this 115th birthday. So I think it's going to be a blast. And um, uh, gosh, uh, Kevin, I, I, I know that you'll have this full presentation and everything uh, as we uh, get to the, um, to the event. Uh, but is there anything that you wanted to add uh, before we go? Well, I think the program that you've put together to me is really exciting because, you know, with Pluto, we're going to talk about the from the beginning to the end of Pluto, you know, from when it was first a dot on the plates taken right with this instrument to the man who made it all happen going out to do the close approach um, viewing um, Alan Stern. So, you know, we're going to Throughout the night, we're going to be able to explore Pluto from a dot to a world. And I think that's pretty neat. I think so, too. I think there's a lot of celebration because the planes are flying overhead now. So <laughs> in formation. That's, yeah, that's right. Spelling out Clyde's name above. <laughs> that's awesome. Gosh, Kevin, thank you so much for making this happen today and taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, you too, um, uh, David. Um, it's uh it's you know really great to have uh, have you two on, and um, uh, we have you know lots more programming, lots more things that we're thinking of. But this one is going to be an event to remember, and uh, I'm very happy we're doing it with you guys. So thank you very much for giving us a gl little glimpse as to what's going to happen on the fourth. And um, until that time, you uh, out in the audience, uh, uh, get your questions ready for, for our team here and, and uh, even, even for the Astronomy Magazine people. I'll be watching the uh, chats and, um, and when it's appropriate, I'll ask your questions and, um, and you'll ha hear the answer live. So it's going to be fun. Until that time, keep looking up, everyone, and um, we'll see you uh, tomorrow. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Talk to you soon. The Southern Cross Astronomical Society of Miami, Florida is proud to present the 2021 Winter Star Party Virtual Edition, February 8th through the 11th. Because of COVID, we will not be able to get together in person this year, but we won't let that stop us from getting together online with old friends and make some new ones. There will be all new presentations about double stars, astroarchaeology, Mars exploration, and more. Enjoy classic videos from past winter star parties by Tippi Dioria, Dr. Mike Reynolds, John Dobson, and more. There will also be door prizes, but you have to register online by January 30th. To register, please visit www.scas.org. Go to the Winter Star Party tab 
Select 2021 Virtual Winter Star Party from the drop-down menu. Go to the bottom of the page. Enter your name and email address and press register. And best of all, it's free. Then join us February 8th through the 11th from 7 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on www.explorescientific.com slash Winter Star Party. Mark your calendar. See you there. Thank you.